This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes made for creatives like you and I. They offer classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video freelancing, and more, all for less than $10 a month on an annual subscription. So a really popular class that I'm following along with right now is character illustrations, drawing faces, figures, and clothing by Gabriel Piccolo. Uh, oh my god, Gabriel Piccolo is on Skillshare. What a great chance to learn how to draw faces, poses, as well as coloring in your final character from a bona fide illustration rock star. Now, I've been a fan of his for years, so what a pleasure it is to be able to pick up some tips and tricks from this amazing artist. Now, another class that I would recommend is Color Theory for Illustrators, a fun beginner's guide to creative color by Brooke Glazer. Now, if you're transitioning from line art to full color illustrations and you don't know what to do or where to go with your color, um, this class is a really good uh, quick way uh, to understand color theory. It's presented in a very digestible manner and gives you very, very concrete steps uh, on what to do in order to achieve good colors in your illustration. So Skillshare is specifically made for learning so there are no ads so that you can focus on whatever it is you are currently interested in. And they're always coming up with new classes so I promise you there's always something new to discover. So the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. Explore new curiosities and deepen existing passions with Skillshare. Hey guys, it's time for another art book video, but today I'm not just going to be showing you any art books. Um, I thought I would show you some of the rarer, quirkier and more interesting art books that I have in my collection. So let's just get started. So the first book I have with me here is The Labyrinth by Simon Stolenhag. Now Simon Stolenhag is a Swedish illustrator and artist who is famous for his sci-fi um, digital illustrations. Now this is the fourth installment by Simon Stolenhag, which explores this post-apocalyptic setting. Um, now this book, I would say, compared to his previous three, is a lot more sinister in tone and style. Um, that's just because this book, its story is a lot darker and the themes that it explores is, are a lot more uh, somber and, and dark, I would say. But you know, nevertheless, the art in this book is absolutely freaking fantastic. Um, the paintings are really gorgeous. And of course, as usual, his um, sort of Swedish, Scandinavian influence uh, shows through in his artwork. So I got this book by backing the Kickstarter. So unfortunately, at the time of making this video, there isn't any news of a wider release for this book. So you could only get this book by backing the Kickstarter, which is what I did. Um, the Kickstarter, of course, is done and dusted now. Hence, you know, I have this book with me. But I'm hoping that this book will get a wider commercial release in the future, as is the case with all his other art books. So I guess right now, if you didn't back the Kickstarter, there is no way for you to get this book, um, except for maybe wait and hope that, you know, this book gets a second publishing run. But I would say, um, because of how popular his artwork is, I think that is a very likely possibility. But right now, unless you've backed the Kickstarter last year, I'm afraid there's no way for you to get this book. Okay, so the next book I have here is the Year One Zine, which is a fanzine for the anime series, anime and manga series, My Hero Academia. So like most fanzines, this is a fan-made thing made by a collection of different artists and writers. 
Now, I really like this art book because of its format. Now, it's formatted like a yearbook, uh, like a high school yearbook for the class of 1A. So what they did was gather a collection of uh, writers and different artists and, and the writer would write an article or an, an interview or, or some sort of story and the artist would uh, draw an accompanying piece of artwork. So each uh, little segment of the zine is a collaboration between the artist and the writer. I think it's really cool because it almost feels like a commercial magazine, like a Men's Health or, 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 or GQ magazine. And of course the artwork is really great and really fantastic. They chose a bunch of very, very talented artists and writers. So I really, really like collecting fanzines like this because of the sheer variety of art styles and artwork, uh, as well as a, it's a really good way to directly support the artists because well, all this is self-published and, and the money goes straight to the artists without any you know, publishers or middlemen in between. As is the case with most fanzines, um, they usually only do one publishing run um, and that's the case with this one as well. So it's very rare for a fanzine to have uh, multiple publishing runs or publish multiple editions um, just because it's a very small operation and they're usually you know, self-published, self-started, fan-made projects. If you didn't manage to get the first and original uh, run of this, probably no way for you to get one of these uh, unless it's a secondhand purchase through someone who owns an original copy. But if you would like to own fanzines like this, definitely follow a bunch of artists on Twitter or Tumblr. That's where I get most of my art news from so you can keep up to date with the latest fanzine releases. Uh, so hopefully you won't miss out on really, really cool projects like this. The next book I have here with me is Robota by Doug Chang and Orson Scott Card. So Doug Chang was one of the principal artists on the Star Wars prequels. Now say what you want about the movie, but it looks pretty darn good. And of course, Orson Scott Card, who is most well known for being the author of the Ender's Games uh, series. So Robota is an original story by Doug Chang and um, he had assistance by from Orson Scott Card with you know the writing of the book. So if you're a fan of Star Wars concept art, especially like the older ones, like the original sequels and uh, you know the prequels as well, then this book is definitely something that you would want to get because there's a lot of influence. You can definitely see um, some a little bit of Ralph McQuarrie in here, a little bit of Sid Mead as well. Uh, Doug Chang is a very very old school guy and I think that most of this stuff is gouache but I, I could be wrong. Now what I like about this book is that you know the world and universe that uh, Doug Chang and Orson Scott Card have created for Robota is so rich and so vibrant that it shows through in the artwork. So this book I would consider rare because this is a first edition printing. Now, if you want to get this book, you definitely can. They have, I believe, made multiple runs of this due to its popularity. But this is a first edition, um, which I believe was printed in, let me see, um, 2003. But if you want, you could definitely get the newer editions, which might be a little bit different. Um, I don't know, but this is a first edition copy of Robota. So the next book I have here is Types by Andrew Bainbridge, uh, which is a self-published um, art book zine that explores uh, typography and its use in illustration. So Andrew was uh, my advisor in uni and he gave this copy to me. I think it's really, really cool because he explores many different types of types and of fonts and uses them in very, very fun illustrative ways. And alongside those are really, really fun little captions that go uh, together with each um, character that he's made. So Stuart here is foppish by nature, keen on armature dramatics and period dramas. This is a really cool project. I'm not sure you could get this anywhere, um, he gave it to me personally 
but yeah, I just thought it was really fun um, and I thought I'd show it to you guys. This is the next piece that I want to show you. Um, now, I would consider this less of an art book and more of like a, a historical artifact to me. So this is that issue of Charlie Hebdo. Um, now, if that doesn't ring a bell, then let me tell you, um, back in 2015, six years ago, um, Charlie Hebdo, which is a satirical uh, comic slash newspaper publication, were attacked by terrorists for the content of their newspaper. If you didn't hear about this, um, I think you might have been living under a rock because this was everywhere all over the news. Um, so this issue of Charlie Hebdo was published after the attack. Now this piece means a, a lot to me because uh, I think that the freedom of expression is a, a right and a privilege that we, we take for granted so easily. And this serves as a reminder of you know, how precious that right is. When, when it happened, I, I of course was, it affected me greatly because you know, I, I draw stuff too and it just never occurred to me that I could be um, punished or persecuted for the things that I draw. Now of course I draw Max, but, but still. <laughs> so I, I went online and I read it and I just posted it in a comment. I said, you know, um, can someone please send me a copy of this? You know, I live in Singapore. And you know, of course, it's it's almost impossible to to get one. And so I got a message from a Parisian policewoman. Um, she told me that she was one of the first responders uh, at the time. And of course, it was a very very painful memory for her. And so she said, you know, I'm I'm glad that someone, you know, across the world cares as much about what happens in Paris uh, as I do. So I'll send you a an issue of this because. You know, I am glad that you care. And I don't want people to forget. I want to I want to spread this message as far as I can. And of course I accepted and I, I, I said I would I would pay her back for a postage or whatever. And, and she refused and she wouldn't take my money. So I, I sent her uh, like a little drawing as a token of appreciation because I had a return address. So this copy of Charlie Hebdo to me is the most precious piece of artwork I have, period. Not only because you know it's a very important historical artifact, it also serves as a reminder of, of how powerful art can be. But of course, I can't show you anything inside this because if I do, I will definitely, definitely get banned. So this is the last art book that I have, and I guess it's a little bit of a cheat to say that it's rare because, uh, well, I made this myself. So it is a one out of one copy. Um, so this is The Secret Labyrinth, which is my final year project for uni. So the story behind this is it is a um, sort of a official document for a researcher who is was sent to um, find out and investigate this organization. Um, it's very inspired by uh, Lovecraftian and SCP stuff, if you're familiar. So the way I designed it was very, very um, official looking, I guess. It was like a, almost like a CIA redacted document. So it's a journal of his investigations and, and journey into this um, secret organization, as well as a lot of different documentations and, and sort of uh, photographs of his investigations. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this because I, get, I got to do a, a lot of really crazy stuff like these like weird diagrams and, and I get to redact stuff like some sort of secret agent and make it look all used and of course you know um, in the folder there are a bunch of different like materials like uh, brochures, uh, receipts, um, train tickets and a map. So I just had a lot of fun um, building up this world and creating like the materials and, and writing the story. 
for it. So of course, there's no way for you to buy one of these. Uh, but if you go to my website, uh, which is in the link below, you can find the high-res artwork that I made for uh, this book, as well as some photographs and, and scans of the rest of this um, little folder. But yeah, I, I always thought that it would be cool to you know make an art book like this that is very immersive. So it's almost as if you are looking at a real piece of you know document and you're like investigating evidence and finding out the story by looking at you know clues in the artwork and reading this text um, with like uh, different different um, no, annotations and marks as well as looking through uh, the materials that come along with the book. It's just something that I was always very interested in and it's a concept that I think, you know, if I explore further, it could be something really cool. Uh, but for now, this is going to remain a school project. So that is my rare art book collection. Um, if you like this video, like it, comment, subscribe, you know what to do. I will see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I was thinking about way back When I thought I had it figured out